go. So I'm not normally one to jump on trends, to be honest, prefer to set them, jokes. But I quite enjoyed this one. I've seen it floating around a little bit on the sort of YouTube podcast space. And I thought, ah, I like the sound of this one. I'll get involved a little bit. So if I could only do 10 exercises for the rest of my life, what would they be? Now, this is a real puzzler because there's a lot you've got to take into account. You've got to take into account your upper body, your lower body. You've got to take into account stuff that you can do, the, the exercise that give you the biggest bang for your buck. So I was like, I, would, I, I gave this a, an inordinate amount of thought, to be honest, probably more than I should have done. But uh, yeah, here we are. So let's run through the list. Number one, and this is in no particular order, by the way. This is literally like, the order I thought them in. Is it the order I thought them in? Yeah, it is literally the most random order you could possibly imagine. But you can kind of see where my brain was going. So number one, press-ups. Like I'm a huge advocate of press-ups generally anyway. I think like a set of press-ups will keep the doctor, a set of press-ups a day will keep the doctor away. That's actually like a new phrase that I am genuinely trying to coin. So trademark and all that stuff, copyright Doug. Um, Press-ups are so good, man. Like for just your whole upper body, because they work your shoulders, they work your chest, they work your abs, they work your core. But not only that, they work the mental demons as well, because regardless of the negative emotion that you're feeling, whether that is stress, anger, depression, whatever it might be, you drop to the floor and do a set of press-ups, just as many as you can do, guarantee you're not gonna, you're, you're gonna feel substantially better within the space of 60 seconds, no equipment needed. So even if you gave me the best gym in the world, I'm still gonna be doing press-ups because I absolutely love them. Number two, again, not necessarily needing a gym here, pull-ups. So let me tell you a little bit of a backstory. When lockdown hit, 2020, I genuinely believe that I got the last pull-up bar in Europe because I was on, I, I still remember it to this day, I was on the 21st page on Google the 21st page and I found a pull-up bar from like, I think it was from a Danish company. And it like, obviously not the last one, but the last one for like an, a reasonable price that wasn't like 2000 pounds or something like that. And it was like 30 pounds or something like that. And I ordered it and then it, I was just like, we'll see what happens. I have no idea if this is gonna come. I have no idea when it's gonna come. And like three days later it arrived and it was just your sort of generic pull-up bar that you sort of screw together, 30 pound and I was like, buzzing, stuck that up. And then I just started challenging myself. And it was literally like, right, I'm gonna do, I think it was a 30 day challenge and I'm gonna compare how many pull-ups I could do on day one versus day 30. And I think by the time I got to day 30, I think I was on something like 27 or 28 in one set. And uh, I remember taking a picture. I had like, a, by this point, you know, as we all did, we built up this a mass of just crap in our, flat, in our houses during, during lockdown. And I had like, I had the whole works. I had a tripod, I had it all. So I was like, you know what? I haven't seen my back in months. Let me take, let me take some photos. Let me do a little photo shoot in the living room, which would have looked strange if anybody could see in my flat, but you, you couldn't, so it's fine. And I was like pleasantly surprised to say the least. Like my, my back had grown, but what was most alarming is it was looking bigger than it had ever done from training in the gym for 10 years. So, that for me cemented the power of pull-ups, but you have to also think about pull-ups. They are like a vertical press-up because you're going up and down, or if you're doing them right, not like a fucking CrossFit retard, you should, go, you should be going up and down basically in a straight line. Now to do that, to keep in that plane of movement of going directly up and down in vertical, you need a lot of core strength to stop yourself wobbling back and forward. So even though you're not realizing it because you're putting so much tension on your, you know, your arms and your back muscles, you're working your core as well. So it's a fantastic exercise for your back, for your shoulders, for your arms and for your core. It's just genuinely like almost a, a complete upper body exercise, even to an extent, if you really squeeze at the top, ooh, click there. If I really squeeze at the top, I can even squeeze my chest right at the top, right? So yeah, pull-ups, number two. And actually number three, I'll group in with that, but it is separate chin-ups for the exact same reason, okay? So that's one, two, and three. Number four, keeping with the minimalist equipment. I promise I'm not a, a calisthenics. I can't even say the word, calisthenics. Calisthenics? Calisthenics? I don't think anyone, what a dumb fucking word, right? Anyway, number four, dips. Again, just a fantastic 
upper body workout or exercise that work on all sorts of stuff. And what I love about dips in particular is as well as working the big muscle groups like your triceps, your shoulders, your chest, your core again, they work lots of little stabilizer muscles, ligaments, tendons, stuff like that as well. And again, no equipment required. So yeah, definitely a huge one there. Right, let's get into some meatier stuff. So my favorite exercise to do in a gym from a practicality point of view, but also just because I'll be honest, it just makes me feel like a fucking man, is deadlifts. So however you're pulling them, sumo, conventional, barbell deadlifts, to me, they are just the absolute goat. Full body workout, literally, you could go in and do 30 minutes of deadlifts and you're probably training more than 90% of men in the gym. And you could go in and just do that two or three times a week and you're probably gonna get more of a sweat on, burn more calories, build more muscle because from your posterior, from the back of your posterior chain all the way down to from your Achilles all the way up to the top of your neck, it is a full body workout that uses basically every single muscle and joint in your body. Now, of course, there's a lot of um, connotations around form and stuff like that when it comes to deadlifts. It's not a simple exercise and it's probably the one that injures the most people. So do be careful if you are going to do these. I will at some point do like a form video on deadlifts. I mean, I, just for context, I can deadlift like 235 kg. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty damn good at deadlifts. I'm 89 kilos. Um, but yeah, deadlifts, absolutely fantastic. Specifically barbell deadlifts as well. Okay, next up, dumbbell side lat raises, but not just the ones where you're going like here. I'm talking all the way above your head and back. And I'll take, I'll take uh, or I'll give credit to um, Renaissance periodization for these ones. God, what's the guy's name? Oh, that's really, I feel really bad that I can't remember his name. But the guy who does Renaissance periodization, Jesus, I feel really bad. Fantastic e expert in terms of the world of exercise and physiology uh, and just a pretty funny guy as well. But he introduced me to that exercise through his videos. And uh, that's actually really gonna annoy me, so I'm gonna Google it while I'm talking. Um, he introduced me to that exercise through his videos and he, uh, renaissance is like such a stupid word. Renaissance periodizer. Fucking hell, this is gonna piss me off when I see it. Why is his name not? Mike Israeli, that's it. That, pff, Jesus, this guy needs to sort out his SEO. <laughs> right, RP, strength. Anyway, he's got a fantastic YouTube channel. Go and check that out. But, um, Oh, I've lost my bloody place now. Yeah, he introduced me to these. And trust me, the difference between doing just your normal dumbbell side raises and going all the way above your head is mind blowing. Like first and foremost, like it will build like the biggest shoulders you have ever seen. Secondly, like it will humble the life out of you in the sense that you you can, I mean, I, I do this with, I'll do four sets of 10, four sets, 10 reps, and I'll do five kilo dumbbells. Oh my God. And like, I got pretty big shoulders. Like you, let me just get the angle right. <laughs> I got pretty big shoulders. I'm relatively strong in the shoulder press, all this sort of stuff. So uh, yeah, it's a humbling exercise, but a fantastic one. Absolutely amazing. Okay, leg press is next for me. Now I thought a lot about this because a lot of people would say, what about squats? Now I'm just talking for me here. I'm six foot four and I'm very leggy. Like four foot of me is legs, maybe more. And as a result of that, I have very long femurs and barbell squats, I, I do do them, but they just don't agree with me as well as a leg press does. If I was to have to barbell squat for the rest of my life, I just wouldn't do them, man. Honestly, I wouldn't. I don't enjoy them enough. I don't feel like I get as much bang for my buck as, as, a, as a shorter guy would. I think if you're on the shorter side, then probably barbell squats over a leg press. But if you're taller, for me, leg press is the goat. It works every single muscle in your legs and uh, you know you can play around with it in so many ways. You can even, if you're cheeky with it, you could use it to do calf raises. Technically, we're using the leg press machine. I don't know, it's a bit of a, a, bit of a gray area, that one. It could be a cheeky 11th one that I'm sneaking in using the leg press machine. But yeah, you can do wide, wide foot stance, you can do narrow, you can do high, you can do low, so you can work hamstrings more, you can work quads more, you can work hips more, groin more. You can do so much in terms of alteration. You can go high reps, low reps, high weight, low weight, or so many variations here. So I absolutely love the leg press. Okay, number eight. Now I'll be real. This is the one that I dislike the most, but I'm sticking in there because I know 
bang for your buck, it's amazing. And it's also the one that I need to improve on personally the most. So I'm sticking it in there because if I had to do it for the rest of my life, I'd be a fucking amazing at it by the end. Dumbbell walking lunges. Now, specifically dumbbell and specifically walking, not just the static ones. And the reason I've put that in there is for the balance element as well. So I don't struggle necessarily with doing the lunges in terms of like moving decent weight, but I do struggle in terms of keeping my balance and keeping my form. So I've stuck them in there because again, just like the leg press, fantastic exercise. They're both a hinge and a, a, a bend movement as well at the knee and the hamstring. So you're using all of your major muscles in your legs there. I've said that very badly, so apologies, but you know what I mean. Go and do some don't go and do some dumbbell walking lunges. You're going to feel it in your glutes. You're going to feel it in your hamstring. You're going to feel it in your quads. It's just fantastic, and it uses all your joints as well. It uses your hip, your knee, and your ankle, which I love. Then we needed another back one in here, so I've gone for the seated cable row, and the reason I've gone for this is because unlike dumbbell and barbell, I find it easier to overload on the seated cable row. Also, I can do drop sets, and I love a good drop set on a machine. So throwing in a drop set where you're doing a set, then resting 10, 20 seconds, lowering the weight by one. So if you're like, imagine you're sitting on the machine, you're moving the pin up one, so you're making the weight lighter uh, and doing like four, five, even six, maybe more sets of that. Like that's gonna be a, give you a great pump and it's a great way to achieve progressive overload if you don't, if you're short on time. And uh, I'm all, it's quite funny because CK where I genuinely have a bit of a fear of this machine because like almost worst case scenario happened. I was sat on the seated cable row, pulled it back, wasn't even going crazy heavy, I think it was my first set, and the cable snapped, and I backflipped off of the back of the seat. And it was like, the, I swear to God, it didn't, but like it felt like the music in the gym had stopped. One of my airport pods fell out and rolled across the floor. I, it was just so embarrassing. And fair play, a guy came over to me and he was like, bro, bro, you're, you're too strong. And I was like, I'm not, it's just, just, I just got unlucky, but like, oh God, it was awkward. And for like a month, I just, I had so much fear. I couldn't use that machine, but uh, yeah, fantastic exercise. And then I was genuinely thinking more and more and more about this. I was like, I've got nine, like what is the 10th? And some of you might be screaming at your screens or your phones or however you're listening to this or watching this and thinking, what about, da, da, da. and I'm not saying that I've thought of them all, but I genuinely couldn't think of a 10th one where I was like, this needs to be in here. And like a lot of people will say, you haven't got like a press movement in there or a fly movement in there or, you know, I've got a vertical pull, I've got a horizontal pull, I've got plenty of leg stuff in there. I'm throwing in cheeky calf phrases as well. So we're working all of our lower body, we've got deadlifts just taking care of the full body as well and, and cardio, by the way, that's what my deadlifts are taking care of. So I genuinely, for number 10, put more press ups because <laughs> I'm just going to keep advocating for them, guys. I suppose you could say more press-ups or pull-ups. But my point is, they are by far and away my absolute favorite. I think in terms of upper body strength, in terms of upper, upper body aesthetics, just get insanely good at press-ups and pull-ups. You wouldn't even need a gym. Now, of course, we love the gym. We're going to keep going to the gym. We're not going to be one of these calisthenic morons standing on a beach saying telling people they can get ripped and lose 30 kilos in 12 seconds or whatever they, whatever crap they're selling these days. But uh, yeah, so guys, that is my 10. Well, technically my nine. I suppose you could say my 10th is car phrases then. Technically, but yeah. Anyway, let me know in the comments what yours are. Let me know if you are screaming at me because you think I've missed any that are like ridiculously important and you think I'm a moron. <laughs> More than happy to be humbled. I'd love to have an open debate about this sort of stuff, guys. And I love doing videos like this. So yeah, let me know what you think about it and uh, let's run it up and let's do some more. Cheers.